We had a disagreement. Bragging rights are on the line. I really hope I'm the one who's right. If I win, it'll be massively embarrassing for Beckett. For the extremes, racket number one was strung in. So I've said it before. Tension is stupid. Doesn't matter. And I'll say it again. Tension doesn't matter. But let's put that to the test. So when I first started working at Courtside Sports, my boss told me that they got a bunch of pros to put in earplugs and the pros could not tell the difference between different tensions. Obviously, I don't have any sources to back this up. It's complete hearsay. That's hearsay, I guess. But it got me thinking. <laughs> So I went down to visit my stringer, Peter, at K8 Stringings to discuss this challenge with him. Initially, I thought, let's string one at 60 and one at 20. We'll go crazy. But Peter's like, no, you're going to obviously be able to tell the difference between 60 and 20. Let's make this reasonable. I'm pretty sure everyone can tell the difference between five pounds. We also ran a poll and it looks like almost everyone can tell the difference between five pounds or up as well. So we'll string the rackets at 50 and 55. It's a blind test. So Peter didn't tell us which racket is strung at what tension. He just marked the grips with the number one and two and gave me an answer key that I did not look at. I also instructed Simon to not hit the rackets together doing that ding 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 test to tell the pitch because that would completely ruin the test. So when Beckett initially told me about this test, I thought he was crazy. I thought that of course you'd be able to tell easily what tension a string was done up at because why else would everybody be constantly playing around with these numbers? You know, it always was part of the game. I'm by no means as experienced in the field as Beckett. He spent many years as a racket stringer and I was interested. So with absolutely no idea what tension my racket was strung in, I stole my girlfriend's wireless noise cancelling headphones, blasted party in the USA to the max, and hit the court. So the first racket I tried was the Gravity Pro, my own racket, and I took the one labeled number one. Right off the bat, the first hit was the most impactful. My mind was sort of racing. I had my ears isolated. I couldn't hear anything. So one of my senses was taken away and it felt like the rest were really trying to compensate as I was focusing hard on trying to make sure I got this test right. I then switched to the second racket and immediately I thought, this feels much less tense. But as I continued to play on, it took only three or four hits into a rally before I completely changed my mind. So I picked up the rackets and the first couple of hits I definitely thought number one was tighter. I switched to number two pretty quickly after and I thought okay maybe uh, then I just really wasn't sure. I had a hard time deciding. What I did start to become a lot more sensitive to was the different sounds between off-center shots. So I felt like I'm not sure if there's a bit of sound coming in through the headphones or if it was my body thinking it was sound but it actually being feel in my hand i was just way more sensitive to like the dynamic tension in the string bed so when i was hitting close to the perimeter of the frame it felt much firmer and then when i was hitting right in the sweet spot in the middle it felt much softer so that was giving my body mixed signals it was hard for me to know okay is this loose because i've hit it in the middle of the frame or is it tight because I've hit it towards the outside of the frame. And I think a big part of that is because you lose that auditory feedback of a clean shot, right? We all know what a clean shot sounds like. It's got that stadium cannon sound. And that's why pros have such a different sound to their clean shots. And we all know shanks have a much higher pitch kind of framey sound and you completely lose that. So as I was hitting more and more, I became much more sensitive to the, the feeling and sound of where I was hitting the ball in the string bed, which caused me to really lose the relative tension difference between the two rackets. So by the end of the test, I was only like 60% confident with my final decision. And as the test wore on, I just became less and less confident, which, which I thought was tighter, but I had to make up my mind with maybe 50, 60% confidence that number one 
was tighter and number two was looser. Really about 70% confident. And it was based off of the first two hits of the first rallies that I hit with the rackets. That's the only time I really noticed a difference. So for my final guesses for the Gravity Pro, I ended up guessing that, that the one with number two on its racket grip was the tighter strung racket. So we had a disagreement. Neither of us know who got it right. I really hope I'm the one who's right. Bragging rights are on the line. If I win, it'll be massively embarrassing for Beckett because he's supposed to be the expert. He's who you guys come to, you know, listen to him rant about all his tennis knowledge and stuff like that. I'm just the plugger. So after I was done with Simon's gravities, I picked up my extremes. And right away you noticed the gravity is a lot more muted than the extreme. Did feel like there was a bigger difference between the two. But that said, still, the first couple of hits, I felt way more connected to the tension. But as time wore on, it became harder and harder to distinguish the difference. At the end of the day, one thing that separated my guess between the two rackets was with the gravity, I kind of based my guess on impact feel. So more of a softer feel on impact, I associated with the lower tension and a stiffer, more boardy experience on impact, I associated with the higher tension. But with my Extreme Tour, because I know that racket a lot better, my decision was more based on launch angle. So in theory, a looser tension is going to have a higher launch angle, give you easier access to depth, but a tighter tension is going to have a lower launch angle, making it harder to clear over the net and typically shorter balls. When I switched to Beckett's Extreme Tours, it is a much more feedback intense experience. It is a racket that gives you a lot of different vibrations as you hit the ball. So even with my ears listening to something else, I felt like I was much more confident in my decision. I think that overall I was probably 75% confident with the Extreme Tour that I got it right. The Extreme Tour number two was a looser racket. I thought that the number two racket on the Extreme Tour was looser because I definitely noticed a tendency that the ball was launching more. As I put more and more effort into it, it just started taking off and I started missing things long that I wasn't quite used to missing long with all the other rackets. So at the end of the day, for me, I was having a harder time playing with racket number one, which I associate with a higher tension. So my final guess with maybe 65% confidence is that number one is tighter and number two is looser. So it's important to note that we did not play with either of our rackets until we took this test. These were fresh strings that we only used after we had put the music on and we were completely unaware of which racket was strung at which tension. That being said, when I came to this test, I was prepared to disagree with Beckett. I thought the tension does matter and I would absolutely be able to distinguish without a doubt in my mind which one was strung at which tension. And that just wasn't really the case. While I do think that tension does matter, I was left a little bit shaken in my belief that it matters as much as I thought it did. Without that ability to hear the racket as it makes contact with the ball, I just didn't feel that confidence that I had hoped to feel as I started the test. You know what? We both don't know still, until right now, which one was strung at which tension. It'll be really embarrassing for Beckett if he gets it wrong because he's the guy who you come to watch for the tennis knowledge. So I'm really hoping I get this right and we're about to find out. Let's open up the results and check out who got it right. All right, friends, so this is the answer key. So I'm opening it up. Lovely ladies on the way. Yeah, realtors, scum of the earth. <laughs> so the gravity. As you can see, oh, this camera's not gonna focus. The gravity, racket number one. Oh, Peter actually changed things up on us, so it was not strung at 50 at 55, but racket number one was strung at 40 pounds. Racket number two was strung at 45 pounds. For the extremes, racket number one was strung at 45, and racket number two was strung at four. I got it right. I got it right. Let's go. <laughs> you idiot. All right. So there you have it. 
The reason I think tension doesn't matter is because I can't feel it at all, apparently. That's not really true. I do think tension matters. I think it does have an effect on your game, but I don't think it's something to be fussed about, and I don't think there's a best tension out there. I think tension is also really a mental thing, because I thought that one of my rackets was strung at 55. So I go to be playing on the court, and I'm having all these problems with depth, and I keep on hitting it too short and I feel like my racket feels really stiff. Apparently that's completely all in my head because it was actually strung at 40 or 45 which is 7 actually, pounds looser. Really the yeah. It strung both of them way lower than either of us thought it would be at. And I really, I thought one of them would felt like 60 pounds. Like, Me too. Intuitively I thought the tight racket felt like 60 pounds and the loose one felt like 50 pounds. Like I thought there was a bigger difference between I don't know, that's weird, that's fun. But both of them were strung looser than what I normally string at, and I thought and one was strung way tighter than You didn't have any problems with control, and neither did I, so there you go. Moral of the story, from this test, you should probably string a little looser than you think. Next video, extra loose strings test, what do you think? Let's do it. Alright, stay tuned, 20 pounds tension coming up.